Okay, so let's get started. So this is going to be a tutorial about converting from Substance Painter to Cinema 4D and vice versa. And the reason that this tutorial needs to be made is usually people use Cinema 4D for, I don't know, modeling, animating, you know, 3D type things, but the texturing in um, Cinema 4D is dog shit. So what you want to do is you want to outsource it, bring it to a different program, namely Substance Painter, where you can work with their nice metal roughness or specular glossiness workflows. And then you're going to export some textures, and then you want to be able to use it in Cinema 4D. So you took a different program, used it for texturing, and you want to bring it back in here. But these two programs don't play nicely, um, unlike something like 3ds Max and Substance Painter. So this tutorial needs to be made. So for example, Let's say that you have some kind of super complicated model like, I don't know, we could just do a platonic solid. So of course you're going to have, I mean most likely if it's something you want to texture, a more complicated model than a platonic solid. But let's say that this is your model, we're going to make it editable so that we can like pull the geometry, and basically what we want to do is prep our model for Substance Painter. Now, since you want to texture this thing, and it's very hard to texture in 3D, we need to UV unwrap it. So take the surface and 3 space and basically transform it into the plane, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to unwrap this object. So because this is a simple object, we're just going to use the automatic unwrapper. So here's our object. We are going to go to UV edit, and I'm assuming you've probably already unwrapped your model. Select all of these, and then we're just going to do a normal automatic unwrapping. This is fine. You see, we can uh, draw. Or actually, we don't want to move it, but we can. Uh, whoops. Uh, we can draw these uh, polys and see where they land on this plane. And once you're happy with this, we're just going to store the UV. Okay, so we have our UV model. Of course, if it's like a robot or I don't know something complicated, you need to unwrap each component. You can have overlay or non-overlaying. doesn't really matter. Okay, so let's say you're happy with this. What we're going to do is we're going to take this and we are going to export it either as a FBX or OBJ. Uh, you want to export it as a FBX if you have um, basically objects grouped into materials and you want that to be saved. But I have one object, so it doesn't really matter. Going to export it as a OBJ object. And we are going to put it in the desktop and call it an object. Save. Okay. So now we have this thing, and we want to bring it to Substance Painter. So we're going to have to open Substance Painter. And because I'm recording, it's probably going to take a bit. But, you know, this is what it's like to go back and forth. There's a lot of uh, loading and waiting. Um, basically, this is a very painful process. And there is a way to go around it using Designer, but that's just another program you need. Okay, so we are in Substance Painter. It will look something like this. We're going to go to File, New, and here you get to choose your workflow. And here it doesn't matter what workflow you use, but we're going to be exporting it as specular glossiness. But just to prove a point, I'm going to use Metal Roughness to begin with. We're going to select our model, which we called Object, and then you can choose your resolution as powers of 2, so it's a game-ready model. I'm going to do 1024. Okay, so this is going to import. Okay, here we go. It looks super smooth, but do not worry about that. That's just um, Fong shading. I think that's what it's called. So you hold Alt and then do various things with your mouse to navigate. But you can tell this is our platonic solid, just very smoothed out. So what we need to do, first of all, is bake the textures. And what this is going to do is give us, you know, ambient occlusion maps, um, normal maps, world space maps, etc. So you're going to click your default material, which is what it comes with when you don't have a material. And then you're just going to bake textures. And then you can pick what you want. I'm going to not use world space normals. Honestly, we don't need most of these, but we'll keep everything else. 1024 by 1024, bake these. And depending on the complexity of what you're making, this could take a while. Okay, baking is done. Uh, you can look at your maps over here. Of course, most of these are going to be just empty because we haven't really done anything with these. It's just a simple object without any uh, high-poly version that we bake down. 
Okay, so either way, let's make this thing look unique. So we're gonna add a fill layer, make it, I don't know, we'll make it red, and we'll make it very shiny, something like, something like this, and very metallic. So here's what we got right now, something like this, and you can see it's reflecting this background, which you can see in viewer settings, and increase that opacity to see what we're reflecting. Uh, let's add a couple other things. So I'm going to add a new layer, use our brush tool, and let's paint on let's paint on some normals. Basically, we want to make sure we're importing everything correctly. So we'll use some hard surfaces, maybe an edge, like that. And then we're just going to draw some things on. Bam, bam. And notice that this is accurate to the lighting. Shift, right click to do this. Okay, just going to add a bunch of things, and then let's actually add some height and color and roughness. So we'll have it go inwards with the height and have it be very rough, which means not reflective, and we'll have it be white. So basically, you paint your object however you want to do it. You can use their materials or whatever. And here's how our thing looks. And it looks, you know, whatever. It looks nice. But the problem is, how do we get this to Cinema 4D? So once you're done texturing and you're happy with what you got, you go to File, Export Textures. And this is where it gets tricky. Start off with where you want to export it to, right here. So we're going to choose the desktop, and that's where we're going to export to. You need in this configuration, if you have specular glossiness to begin with, you keep it. Otherwise, you go to Spec Gloss from Metal Roughness, because that's what we did. But if you have specular glossiness, just keep that. Um, okay, 1024 by 1024. And then we're just going to change some of this configuration. So here is PBR spec gloss from Metal Rough. That's what it says over here. And here we have all our maps, but we don't need a emissive map. That's basically for luminance and glowing. Instead, we're going to add a ambient occlusion like this. This is how you do it. And then we'll just keep this naming convention and then call this AO for ambient occlusion. OK, so when we export, we expect six maps, these textures to be exported. And then make sure you're happy with all this. You can choose file format, click export. Bam. If we go to our desktop, here is our you know, textures. So for example, we have our diffuse, which is basically just the color of the thing. You know, is red with some white. We have its kind of like shininess or lack of, which is going to be captured in the roughness and in the, or in the glossiness and in the, I guess just the glossiness and the specular really. So we have this information. We also have our normals, you know. So how do we import this? Well, what you do is we're going to create a material for our object, or it could already be created. We're going to apply it. So now we have this material, but it's white. What we want is shiny red with bumps and, you know, white stuff. So we're going to open the material, and this is where there's a lot of controversy about how to do this properly. So you can start with the diffuse um, bitmap, which is, you know, it's the color of the thing, which, of course, you can put into diffusion, you can put it into color, but if you want that PBR physical-based rendering, go into reflectance, and then we're going to add a diffuse, OK? So basically, we're going to do most of this stuff in reflectance. So in layer color, we're obviously going to choose diffuse. So find your uh, texture that is blah, 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 diffuse. OK, so so far, this is what we got, which is, you know, it, you know, it captures this. But we also want the bumpiness of the thing. So let's import our normal and bump. So in the normal channel, you put in the normal texture, as you would expect. That's this one. And in bump, you put in height. And basically, these are kind of redundant, but normals are better than height. Bump doesn't really matter. We'll import them both. And notice that already we have this kind of, you know, these things, these hard surfaces that we put on. And we can uh, increase our viewport resolution. Yeah, look at that. 
But now what we're missing is, you know, the shininess, the pop. How do we do that? So what you do is you're going to add another layer, a GGX or a Beckman, whatever you want. And you can see already this is where we're going to put in our shininess. So in the roughness, this corresponds to glossiness. We're going to put roughness up to 100. Then, because we don't want it all to be at 100, we're going to import our glossiness, which is the inverse of roughness. So if something's very glossy, it's not very rough, and vice versa. They're inversely proportional. So we're going to go to, to uh, Colorizer, and this is where we're going to invert our glossiness so that it becomes roughness. So in Colorizer, we're going to want to import import glossiness. But first of all, glossiness is the opposite of roughness. So we want to invert it. To do that, we're going to do a gradient white to black, white to black. And notice here, this is what we get. We get mainly black with some white splotches, whereas our glossiness was mainly white with some black splotches. So you can see how we reversed it. Okay. So there you go. That's our roughness. And now we need our specular color. So when the light shines off of it, you know, as you can see here, I mean, here it should shine off red and here it should shine off white. So in this layer, we're going to go to layer color. And here we're going to put our specular. Boom. So that's already looking pretty good. And if you want your ambient occlusion, which in this case should just be a empty texture since we don't have any, but we'll import it anyways. Uh, to do that, what you want to do is you want to go to where you put in your first layer, where you put in your diffusion, your diffuse. We're going to turn this into a layer, right? A layer, which right now just has our diffuse bitmap. But what we want to do is put ambient occlusion over it and then get rid of the white stuff. So we're going to import ambient occlusion, which is going to mess everything up. It's just white. So you set it to multiply, which again, in this case, won't do anything since we don't have any AO. And then basically, you're, you're not done, but you're pretty close. So now what we want to do is we want to test this. So we're going to set up a physical sky. And then we can also have it reflect something from a normal sky. Why do we want this? Well, here we see that we have this kind of grassy, I don't know what this is, this environment. And that's what's being reflected in the red. And right now in Cinema 4D, we do not have that. So we're going to make a material, put it on the sky. In that material, we're going to give it an environment. So let's just go to... SpongeBob picture is why I have it. So you can see we have this SpongeBob picture, which we want it to reflect, but we don't want to actually see it in the camera. So add a compositing tag, seen by cameras off, and then our physical sky, we don't want that to reflect because we want the SpongeBob picture. So turn off reflection. So let's see what we have so far. Okay, so we have something going on for sure. It's it's definitely correct, but it's not, this is not identical to what we have going on here. So what we need to do is at this point, this is where it kind of gets frustrating. We've put it, we've put all the texture maps where we need them, but we need to still play with it. Whereas with 3ds Max, you wouldn't really need to. So first of all, instead of previewing it all the time, we're going to add this interactive region like this, which we can continually update and see what this looks like. OK, let's play with our material. So basically, what you want to play with is the levels of these two layers. So let's turn this one down. You can already see that's looking better. We're going to go to layer 1, increase specular strength, get that to look a bit more white. Layer 2, turn down the reflection. See if that does anything. Yeah. And basically what you want to do is tweak this until it looks like this, which could take a long time. So you see, if you turn this off, we almost have our nice uh, white. But generally, you can see that the main issue above anything else is that this whole image is darker. 
So to fix that, what we can do is let's add some, some global illumination and set the gamma to something higher, like 2. Now let's see what this looks like. Eh, barely brighter. You can also make this physical sky, which is the light. Crank that up three times as bright. Yeah, now we're getting somewhere. Now it's looking white. You can even go crazy with it. Here's like a thousand. Yeah, now it's looking much closer. But we're missing some of that reflection, which I think I turned down. Yep. Now it should look more reflective. There you go. Basically, you play with these until you're happy with them. And believe me, it is frustrating that there is no kind of immediate solution to get them to look identical. But, you know, you can either use do this or use Cinema's just trash, like, poly paint feature, which you don't want to use. Let's see, what else, what else do I want to cover here? I don't know. You basically just play with this. The idea is to use substance as a way to get the general look for what you want, and then you tweak it inside Cinema 4D. No, you may not get the identical looking thing, but you can get it to look close or even better in some cases. And if you want identical, what you do is you do your thing in Substance Painter, turn that into a smart material, and then play with it in Designer where you can export it as a substance, as a .sbsar file. So instead of all these textures, you export a material in this case. What do you do with this material? Well, there's a plugin, free plugin, of course, for Cinema 4D where you can import substances and then apply it. So if you have designer, you can get it to look identical. That's all I have to say. Thanks for watching. Main point of this video is to say height goes in bump, normal goes in normal. Diffuse, you can either put in color or as a layer in reflectance. Specular, you put on a second layer as the layer color. Glossiness, you put in the roughness channel where you invert it and turn roughness up to 100. And then AO, that's ambient occlusion free. You overlay it, set it to multiply. And no, it's not perfect, but that's how you get some pretty good results. So for example, this technique is what I used to very recently make, if I can find the file. Yeah. So I had the this issue, but here's the kinds of, actually I'll show you the final result. Here's what I made, and it's based off of this object right here. Let me make sure I'm showing it to you guys. It's pretty close. It's actually pretty close. I'm happy with it. But it looked so much better in Substance Painter, so do what you can. Thanks for watching this tutorial, and I hope it was useful. This is basically the information you'll find if you look at every single forum for importing stuff into Cinema 4D from Substance Painter. Some alternatives, um, if you do not like this answer, is one, to change your 3D package to my or Max, anything by Autodesk, that has, you know, materials that include glossiness and met metallic channels and all that. You can also change where you paint, but I wouldn't recommend that. Um, you could always do everything in ZBrush. Wouldn't recommend that either. Thanks for watching, guys. This has been my tutorial. See ya.